Boys and girls, my name is Elsie. And my name is Talia. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Oh Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day, Sunday morning that you have given us. Oh Lord, we pray that you will be able to understand your word. And oh Lord, that we will be able to believe in you, oh Lord. We pray that you will help us to know more of your word and for us to be kind and polite. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Let's join the praise and worship team.
excited today. Why? Because it's safari. We have a safari to the Mara. And wait a minute. What time is it? 10 minutes to 10. Oh my goodness. Where is Teacher Wasa? We are getting late. Hey, okay. hi Teacher Pam. I'm finally here. There was crazy traffic on the road, but I thank God I'm finally here. I couldn't just imagine missing out on this safari. Good. Good to see you, Teacher Wasa. Thanks. What is in your bag? It looks a little bit heavier than mine. Oh, in this bag I have a change of clothes, I have my personal effects, and of course I have my spotlight, my phone, and my wallet with the documents and some cash. Awesome, awesome. Let me tell you what I carried. I carried enough clothes for the whole journey. I carried my sanitizer, enough mask. I also carried my hiking shoes. I love hiking. My traveling document. I couldn't forget carrying my uh, uh, document. I also have my ticket. I also didn't forget to carry my Bible. Okay? Uh -huh. So I'm so, so excited to today's, I mean, today's journey. Are you? Very excited. So let's get moving. Yeah. My name's Aticha Pam Roby, and I'm so, so excited today to be uh, uh, taking you through this new series with my fellow teacher, Chawaswa. But before that, I would like to uh, extend a warm, warm, warm welcome to all our viewers, all our listeners on whatever platform you are today. And thank you so much, President Worship Team, for leading us in that powerful, powerful session. That was just amazing. May the Lord God bless you real, real good. Indeed, that was amazing. And I want to welcome all of you. I hope you have your Bibles as usual, your notebook, your pen, and very importantly, your safari manual. You can always find that one with the guidance from your teachers in your assemblies. And most importantly, you have a very attentive mind. But before we go into the lesson, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for gathering us together to hear your word. We pray that your Holy Spirit shall be with us, O God, to lead us and to guide us that we may understand your word. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, welcome everyone. So, before we start on today's series, I would like to remind you, can you remember what you learned in the past weeks? Well, if you can, very good. And if you can't, I'll just remind you a little bit what you learned. So, we've been doing the series on the names of God, just to help you remember some names that we did. We learned uh, names like Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah uh, Elohim, just to Name, but just but a few. We also did on the series on prayer for four Sundays. And in this series of prayer, we did on pray, praying with faith. And then we also did praying through, we learned praying through uh, pain and praying every day. And the last Sunday, we tackled on God answers prayer. Hope you can all remember. So today we have a very, very, very exciting uh, topic. And I'm going to ask teacher Wasa to tell us more about it. Yes. Today we are starting a new series called The Safari. Now the Safari comes from a Swahili language, which just means a trip or a journey, right? So in today's lesson, the Safari simply means a discipleship program that has been developed to help you grow, to know, and to learn more about Jesus Christ as you walk in obedience to him. Now somebody may be asking, what is discipleship? Now discipleship is a process of continuous spiritual growth. How do you grow spiritually? It's by continuously following Jesus and obeying his commandments. Jesus told us in Matthew 28 verse 19, and this is what he said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all the things that I have commanded you. Now, in this particular lesson of safari, we have three objectives. Objective number one is that we shall learn we shall know what the safari is all about. Then after that, we will be motivated to engage into the safari journey. And finally, we will be committed to continuously grow in the spiritual journey through the safari. Wow, awesome. But before that, I just want you to understand, in every safari or every journey, there are stages. So in this program of discipleship of the safari that we are learning, we have five stages. And I want to remind you for those, maybe it's your first time, maybe don't, you've just forgotten. I want to remind you, our first stage is enter. This is the call to know. Our second one that we learned was encounter, the call to grow. And our third one was embrace, the call 
to bond, to bond. And the fourth one was enlist, the call to serve. The fifth one was engage, the call to come and go. Well, I'm going to explain to you a little bit what, uh, in every stage, what it means. So just imagine yourself, you're moving from point A to point Z. As you're traveling from A to Z, there are stages, this stage uh, point B, stage B, and until, all the way until Z. So I want to see in every stage in this discipleship, what is it that you're going to learn? Remember, as you're starting the lesson, we told you, come up, come with a pen, uh, with a notebook and Bible, because you'll be writing down. And those who don't have, probably you have your manual. So as you have your manual, you also please fill in the, uh, the places that you're supposed to fill. So we'll start with our first stage. Stage one is enter. And enter, this is the call to come and know God. So here we learned about the basic Christian teaching, okay? In this stage, what we really focus on was about um, our, our believers, you know, uh, the, the basic teachings as a Christian. We need to know about Jesus and the church at large, okay? We are all followers of Jesus. We are all disciples of Jesus. And the second one that we learned was stage two, okay? Those who are writing down stage two, this is encounter, the call to come and grow in Christ Jesus. Let me just repeat for those who are writing or taking notes, okay? Stage two, encounter, the call to come and grow in Jesus Christ. Okay, what was our focus here? Our focus was to go deeper in the truth of our Christian faith, understanding and growing in a relationship, relationship with Christ Jesus. That was our main, main focus. Okay, we'll go to stage three. And stage three, what we learned about was um, uh, embrace, okay? Come and bond by having a good relationship with one another. I'll repeat it for the sake of those who are writing. So three is embrace, come and bond and have a good relationship with others. What was our main focus here? Our main focus is that you need to grow in love so that we can reach out to the other people, okay? You can able to go to visit the people in the hospital, help the needy when you have the love of Christ. That was our main, main focus on this stage. Stage four, which was enlist, is to come and serve, okay? I'll repeat again for those who are writing. Stage four, enlist, come and serve. So in this uh, stage, this is what we learned, the importance of serving God through our abilities, through our gifts, and through our talents. That was the main, main reason that we, I mean, those are the main focus that we were learning in this stage. And the fifth stage, which I've said is engaged, was basically to come forth, come and go forth. That was our main, main uh, reason, I mean, our focus on this stage. And basically, this is the stage where we learn about going out there to serve. You know, you've learned about the word of God, you've been equipped, and now you're ready to go out there and tell others about Jesus Christ. Oh, teacher Pam, that is so amazing. But one will ask, how does somebody go through all this process? Well, don't you worry. There are various ways in which we can go through the safari. One way, we are going to go through the safari at the individual or personal level. What you only need to do is to set aside some time every day to read the word of God and to pray. And to help you do this, the church has prepared a junior safari manual for you. In that manual, we have amazing lessons, activities, daily reflections to help you every day to read and to pray and to know more about Jesus Christ, all right? You know, the Bible tells us in James chapter 4, verse 8, that come closer to God and God will come closer to you. And of course, if you don't come closer to God, God will also not come closer to you. So you see, we can do it at the individual level. Secondly, we can also do the safari at the group level, all right? We can form some small groups where we can come together and study the word of God together. You know, small groups are very good because we encourage one another as we hear the input from each and every person, right? And you know, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25, that let us think of ways of motivating one another to acts of love, not forsaking the habit of meeting together, right? So when we meet together, we are able to encourage one another in the word of God, all right? Then the next stage in which we can learn the safari, the next process, after the small groups, we can also meet at the congregational level. 
These are large groups, you know, like the whole Sunday school, for example, DVBS. Think about prayer days, the days where we gather together as children, you know, teens, preteens, we meet together and we're able to learn the Bible together, all right? Then beyond that, we can also learn the safari through what we call similar groups. These are groups of similar interests. Maybe you belong to a Bible club within your estate, for example, or you belong to a club, football club, swimming club, any group of interest. Maybe it could be girls alone, it could be boys alone, but it's a group of similar interests. You can use that opportunity to study the word of God and go through the safari. And of course, finally, but not least, we can do the safari at the whole church level where all of us meet in our local assemblies, children, youths, teenagers, all of us, and we're able to go through, plus even the others were able to go through the entire safari process. So you see, we have an opportunity of going through the safari everywhere by everybody. Wow, that's very, very, very true. You may be asking, so why should I join a safari? That could be your next question. Here are the reasons why you should join one. First of all, number one, the discipleship journey will help you to grow spiritually, okay? Very, very important. And then you, may, you must be willing to practice self-denial. And you may be saying, but how? What does it mean? What it means is saying no to people or things for the sake of Christ. For example, wake up early in the morning to do the personal devotion or give up your best TV program for the sake of going to a Bible club or a Bible study, Bible study there, or even uh, praying with your family members. And also, um, you, it could be obeying your parents, which is very important, okay? Another reason why you should join a safari group is help you to make the right decision, okay? This is a divine priority. And when you do this, you may ask, how do I do? How do I make the right decision? You make the right decision when you, every day you work your relationship with God through reading of the Bible, memorizing the scriptures, listening to the voice of God, and following his commands. Matthew 6, 33 say, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these other things shall be added unto you. That is what the Bible says. Another reason why you should join a safari group, it's help you to develop the courage, you know, and the confidence in telling others all about Jesus Christ. This means you have to commit yourself. You have to have that courage. You go out there, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, you know, tell, tell your classmates about Jesus Christ. That is the reason why you should join the safari group. I would like to ask Teacher Wasa to read for us the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 19 to 20. Yes, Teacher Pam. This is what Matthew, chapter 4, verses 19 to 20 says. Jesus was actually walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And there he met two brothers, Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, as they were throwing their nets into the water because they were fishermen. Jesus called to them, come, follow me. I will show you how to fish people. And they actually left their nets and followed him. Thank you so much for reading the word of God. Can you see how quickly the disciple left their nets to run to follow Jesus? We should be that quick to run and follow Jesus Christ. And it may be saying, but how do I follow Jesus Christ? When you know the word of God, you will follow Jesus Christ. You will run very fast. When you're told to come and join and do the discipleship, you will run fast. You want to know what is happening. What are we doing? How are we teaching you this? Okay, so Jesus desires or wants us to follow him by trusting and learning his words so that we may grow and bring others to him. That is what Jesus wants from us. Well, let us all have that willing heart to follow Jesus, to want to know more about Jesus, okay? And then you may be saying, okay, the disciples ran to Jesus. So whom do we run to? Jesus is not here. What happened? Yes, Jesus is not here with, here with us physically, but he has entrusted us our church leaders, your Sunday school teacher, your church, I mean your Sunday school pastor, to teach us, equip us for the word of God. So which means all of us need to learn the word of God and need to be trained in the ways of God. Another thing we also need to know, it is possible for us believers, you know, as a Christian, to go out there and spread the word of God, the word of God, and let other people know all about it. Yes. That is very true, teacher Pam. So boys and girls, what are we learning in this particular lesson? Now, we have learned that safari is a five-stage discipleship journey that helps us to grow spiritually. Number two, 
the safari will help us to make the right decisions by ensuring that we follow the right priorities. Thirdly, it will help us to be courageous and to be bold, to stand for our faith and also to bring others to Jesus. But in order to have all these benefits, what you need to do is to commit yourself, commit your time to go through the safari program, all right? That is what Jesus says, all right? But more importantly, for you to do that, you must be friends with Jesus Christ. So the first place to start is by inviting Jesus Christ into your life so that he can be your Lord and Savior. And by the way, Jesus also expects those people who are born again, not just to stop at that level, but to continue growing in their faith. Very, very true. You need to be born again. You might be asking yourself, but then how? How? I want to follow Jesus. I want to run quickly and follow Jesus the same way the disciple did, left their, their nets and ran to Jesus, okay? We're going to pray with you and repeat after me as I pray, okay? Dear Jesus, I come before you. I surrender all my life to you. Forgive all my sins. I write my name in the book of life. I thank you for forgiving me. Today, I am your child. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. Your name has been written in the book of life. You are a follower of Christ. You've forgotten everything. You've left all the things behind, and now you're ready to follow Jesus, which is the most important thing. So don't keep it to yourself. Tell someone, share with someone, share with the Sunday school teacher, share with your parents, your guardian, whoever is close to you. Let them know that you've given your life to Jesus, okay? And for us who are Christians, who are out there and you know, but you, want, you don't know how to be committed, I am going to pray for us so that we may be committed. We may be faithful in this journey of a safari until we finish so that we can see what you're going to get out of this. So I'll ask us to pray. Close your eyes wherever you are and let us just pray. Dear Father in heaven, we commit everyone who is watching and listening to us today that as we start this journey of the discipleship of safari, that we are going to be committed, that you are going to be faithful in doing all the daily reflection, that you are going to memorize the scriptures, that you are going to do what we are supposed to do and follow whatever we learn by the help of your Holy Spirit. We thank you and we pray that it shall be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And of course, now to our memory verse. Now, our memory verse comes from Mark chapter 8, verses 34. And the Bible says, If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. I repeat once again, Mark chapter 8, verses 34. The Bible says, If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Right. So in conclusion, this is what I'd say. We told you, uh, we're going to tell you how you're going to get your manual in case you don't have. You'll find all your Safari Junior manual from your local assemblies. So make sure you have a copy next Sunday so that you're able to fill in all the, what you're supposed to fill in. And also remember to spread the word of God as you go out there to everyone and call your friends. Let people come and share and learn this wonderful, wonderful series together. Oh, thank you so much for tuning in. And we hope that you've been blessed and now you're ready to engage into this safari journey together with us. You have been with us, our teachers. Teacher Pam. And myself, Teacher Waswa. So looking forward to go and I'm getting my staff to go for my journey. Off to our safari. Ah, let's go. Let's go. Finally. Huh?